So this is actually going to be the last video for geometry. It's going to cover the second half of chapter 16 uh, and it's going to continue to focus on proofs. Uh, so by the end of this video you're going to know some more geometric proofs. Um, so we're going to start with some Pythagorean theorem stuff. Um, actually some shortcuts for how you can prove triangles to be congruent more easily. So we're going to start with the HA congruence shortcut, which says that if the hypotenuse and an acute angle of a right triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and an acute angle of a second right triangle, then the two right triangles are congruent. So essentially, if you have two triangles, two right triangles, and you're told that the, hypotenuse is, uh, the hypotenuses are congruent and that these acute angles are also congruent, then you can say that the triangles are congruent. Then we have the LA congruence shortcut, which says that if one leg and an acute angle of a right triangle are congruent to the corresponding leg and acute angle of a second right triangle, then the two right triangles are congruent. So here, if you have two right triangles and you have a leg and a corresponding leg and acute angle that are congruent, then you can say that the two triangles are going to be congruent. Then we have the LL congruent shortcut, which says that if the two legs of a right triangle are congruent to two legs of a second right triangle, then the two right triangles are congruent. So if you're given two right triangles and you're told that the legs are congruent, then you can automatically assume that the triangles are congruent. Then we have our last one, the HL congruence shortcut, which says that if the hypotenuse and one leg of a right triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and a leg of a second right triangle, then the two right triangles are congruent. So for this, if we have two right triangles and we're given the hypotenuse and a leg, we can say that they're congruent. Okay, now I'm going to go through an example of an indirect geometric proof. So, as you may remember, an indirect proof uh, begins by assuming, assuming the opposite of what you wish to show is true, and then you try to eliminate that response, leaving, only, leaving the only option as the true one. So, we're going to start with the conjecture that if the measure of angle N... Um, it does not equal the measure of angle O in the triangle NOT, then the segment NT does not equal the segment OT. And we're given the triangle NOT with measure N not equaling measure of angle O. And we're going to show that the segment NT does not equal OT, the segment OT. And this time, we're not going to do a two-column proof, we're going to do a paragraph proof. Um, and this is easier for shorter proofs, otherwise they can get a little convoluted, uh, but this should be pretty clear. Um, so we're going to start by assuming that NT equals OT, so we're doing an indirect proof, we're assuming the opposite. And then we're going to say that if N segment NT equals segment OT, then the measure of angle N would equal, equal the measure of angle O by the isosceles triangle conjecture. But this contradicts the given fact that the measure of angle N does not equal the measure of angle O. Therefore, the assumption that NT equals OT is false, and thus the opposite, that NT does not equal OT, is true. Okay, so now we're going to do some practice problems with coordinate geometry. Um, so we're going to find the missing coordinates here without adding any new letters. So we're given that triangle ABC is isosceles, and we're given that point A is at negative A0, and point C is at 0B. And then we need to find um, the coordinates of point B. So since we know that these, this is an isosceles triangle, these distances are going to be equal, then we know 
uh, and we can see that this is going to be on the x-axis, so the y value is going to be 0, and then since these distances are going to be equal, that means so are these distances, and so we can say that since this is negative a, this is going to be a. And then for our second problem, we have a quadrilateral ABC, and that we have that it's a parallelogram, which essentially means that so this side is going to be parallel to this side, this side is going to be parallel to this side, and they're also going to be congruent in those pairs. So, and we're given these points, A is at 0, 0, B is at A, 0, and D is at B, C, and we need to find uh, the coordinates of C. So we can pretty, pretty easily find the Y coordinate, um, because since these points are on the same line, uh, and it's going to be parallel to the, this line, which is horizontal, it's also going to be a horizontal line. So the y value is going to be the same. So it's going to have a y value of c. Then the x value, um, we can't, it's obviously not a, because a would go up around there. Um, so we need to be a little creative. So if a is that far, and then we have this distance here over to b, then we can see that it's going to be about the same. And that's one of the uh, great things about parallelograms is that they form these uh, right triangles on the sides and they're going to be congruent. So we can actually say that the x-coordinate is going to be a plus b.